how there everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video today we are going to be analyzing or at least reanalyzing the company Lowe's yesterday Home Depot its competitor put out their earnings and well they actually went down a lot in their stock price looking pretty juicy however if you saw that video it still needs to fall a lot more now since Lowe's is actually coming out in just a couple minutes of me putting out this video, I want to see if this company is buying now or do we want it to fall a significant amount just like Home Depot. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Starting off, we got the dividend summary. Lowe's pays out a dividend yield of around 1.44, which ends up being 80 cents per share for an annual payout of $3.20. This is not as huge as Home Depot was at almost double. However, guys, this company is significantly more stable than that of Home Depot solely because of the fact that they have increased this dividend for 58 consecutive years, making them a dividend king, a very, very few of them that have been able to do this. Now, obviously I'm skipping around here. Payout ratio in regards to the net income is around 24%. And the five-year growth rate on this dividend, guys, look, look at this. The five-year growth rate for a well-established company that has increased their dividends for 58 consecutive years is a whopping 17.67%, which is just unheard of. Normally when you have this kind of dividend growth for 58 consecutive years and a well-established company, this five-year growth rate is in the single digit, not the double digits. So this is really looking good just from a dividend standpoint. Now, does this mean that they can afford their dividend? Not necessarily. We're going to take a look at the payout ratio in regards to their free cash flow and make an assessment whether or not they're able to afford this dividend. But nonetheless, ex-dividend date unfortunately passed as of January 18th and they paid out actually this month on February 2nd and they pay out their dividends quarterly. Now let's actually come over here to the spreadsheet. We got the ticker symbol of LOW low market cap of $144.6 billion. PE of guys 18.64. 18 0.64 for a company that is really well established that has increased their dividends for 58 consecutive years. Pretty much just saying that this current share price of $214, which by the way, it did fall yesterday among the whole Home Depot fiasco as well. Home Depot fell a lot more than Lowe's. However, Lowe's also fell a lot. And it fell all the way up to 214. And the fact that the PE is under 20 is giving us a good indication as to maybe this is a good buy right now. As we saw, they do pay a dividend of $3.20 per year, which actually ends up only being, guys, $2.2 billion being paid out every single year in this dividend. And after this is paid out, they're still left with a good $2.9 billion in their five-year average free cash flow, which only comes out to be 43% of their payout ratio in regards to the free cash flow. Now, my metric when it comes to this payout ratio is I want it to be under 60. And the fact that it's a 43 is looking really, really good. And it's telling me that they can 100% afford this dividend. Now let's actually take a look at some metrics. We got, of course, starting off the net income five years ago of $3.1 billion to one year ago of $5.8 billion, which is a pretty good increase, guys, of 89%. Now, three years ago, they had a slight hiccup. However, they managed to recover and boy, did they recover very, very nicely. In my personal opinion, seeing that this is a home improvement store, again, similar to Home Depot, they have a pretty good moat. I don't think people are going to stop going to them. In my opinion, they are very Amazon proof. Next, we got the free cash flow, the lifeblood of the company. Cash room operations, less your capital expenditures. Five years ago of $4.5 billion to one year ago of $9.3 billion, which is a really good increase, guys, of 108% with a five-year average free cash flow of around $5.1 billion. Now, similar to the net income, they did have a hiccup two years ago, whereas the net income had it three years ago. But nonetheless, two years ago, they fell down to around $2.8 billion. However, one year ago, they just completely skyrocketed again. And seeing that the and seeing home prices being the way they are and just the housing market and in general, I have a feeling that stores like these, like Home Depot and Lowe's, mainly Lowe's because we're talking about Lowe's right now, in these kinds of markets are never going to go out of favor. Next, we got the revenue five years ago of $65 billion to one year ago of $89.6 billion, which is a really good increase of around 37.8% and a really steady increase pretty much all throughout the way, which is exactly what you want to look at. Nice, steady growth and consistent when it comes to their revenue, free cash flow, and of course, their income. Now, let's take a look at 
their assets and liabilities. This tells you whether or not the company is able to cover all of their liabilities slash debts if they were to liquidate all of their assets. And currently, Lowe's has a whopping $4 billion total assets minus the total liabilities. However, guys, something to take a note here. Look at this. Ever since five years ago to two years ago, they have been struggling to get these total assets and liabilities up, right? Five years ago, they were barely above water at 26 million. I can't even get my cursor over this. 26 million dollars. Four years ago, they did a little bit better of 676 million dollars. Then they went negative three years ago to negative 269 million. And then two years ago, they went slightly positive to 136 million. One year ago, they completely shot up all the way up to 3.4 billion. And then today, as I said, they have around $4 billion. This to me tells me that if they are able to continue this in the long run, they should be okay. However, taking a look at this past, I have no idea as to why they did so bad when it came to their assets and liabilities. But nonetheless, looking at the average total assets, they have around $17 billion. Average total liabilities is around $15.6 billion. And then doing the average assets minus average liabilities, we get around $3.4 billion. Now let's take a look at the silent killer when it comes to investing, and that is the shares outstanding. You essentially want this number to be heading down and not up because the more a company issue shares, the more they're diluting you. You don't want this. And Lowe's is actually to the point that I'm concerned that if they continue to buy shares at this rate, there won't be any shares left to buy. Five years ago of 866 million shares to today of 686 million shares. Now, on the five years, guys, that is a share buyback of around 20.79%. And from the previous year to the current year, they brought it back down to a whopping 4.19%, which is huge. Absolutely crazy that in one year, they bought almost four and one fifth of their shares back. And lastly, we got the cash equivalents. And as of today, they have around $6 billion in cash equivalents with an average cash equivalents of around $2.2 .2 billion. Now let's make some assumptions. Obviously, low, medium, high. And I'm going to use three factors for this. Growth, projected share buybacks, and required rate of return. The required rate of return, I'm going to keep it the same across all of them. 10% to match the S&P 500. Changing the growth and projected share buyback. For the low assumption, I'm going to say a growth of around 12%. And for the projected share buyback, I'm going to say 10%. Guys, this comes to a whopping share price of $240.98. Now, for the median assumption, growth of around 15%, projected share buyback of, let's say, 11%. This comes out to a target share price of $274.66. And lastly, for the high assumption, a growth of 17%, projected share buyback of 12 and we get $302.82. Now, we need to adjust for debt because adjusting for debt gives you a more accurate representation of what this company's value is. So, you take their cash on hand, and you add the net debt to it and then you add that value to the market cap that we just came up with using this calculator. In doing so, we get a target share price adjusting for debt of $192.51 for the low assumption, $224.53 for the median assumption, and $250 for the high assumption. Now let's add a margin of safety just so that we can have a little bit of cushion here and there. And in doing so, for the low assumption, we would like to buy between 163 all the way up to 183. For the median assumption, we would like to buy between 190 and 213. And for the high assumption, we would like to buy between 213 and 238. Guys, if you believe my assumptions, again, these are mine. If you do not agree with them, I highly suggest you get this calculator. It's in my discounted free cash flow calculator video. I have it for free. Anybody can have it. Just make a copy. All I ask for is like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. I would like to grow my channel. We're almost at 380 subs. That's absolutely amazing. Absolutely love it. We'd love to get to 500 by the end of March just so that way I can start making community posts and having polls so that way you guys can vote. It'll be really, really cool. Awesome. Can't wait for that to happen. But as you guys can see right here, the current share price is 214 So... If you agree with my assumptions, again, if you agree with my assumptions, I'm not telling you to buy this. I'm just saying if you agree, then by all means, this right here is falling right in between the margins of safety of 5% for the median assumption and 15% for the high assumption, meaning 
that if you think that this company is going to grow 17% within the next three to four years and buy back their shares at 12%, buying it right now will give you the highest amount of return, assuming that my assumptions in the high metric are correct, which is just crazy. Because again, the more you pay for something today, the less you will have returns in the future. All right. in all, guys, when it comes to Lowe's, I fairly like this company a lot, honestly. And I did not realize that they were actually this good when it came to their current share price because i recently bought them at around 185 dollars when they had like the 11 percent crash a couple months ago so i was pretty hesitant in buying it however after seeing this honestly i might end up buying it tomorrow if they fall because their earnings are really bad or just because they fall just in general right if that were to happen honestly i might put in a couple hundred dollars into lows because i fairly like this company but that pretty much does it for this episode like if you like comment subscribe it really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. You can follow me on my new tech sites of BitChu, Odyssey, and Rumble. Where in addition to my stock analysis videos and crypto videos, you'll find exclusives as well. In regards to YouTube and Rumble, I have a Let's Play channel called Fatal Place. Link in the description below. Where I'm currently playing through Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if you want to catch that, link is in the description below. With that said, peace out. And I will see you all in the next stock analysis video.